Hi everyone, it's Jake and Nadia, and today we're going to talk about The Night Agent, who that was number one on Netflix for about a week. Jake watched the first episode with me, and he didn't want to watch it again. Me, I watched all 10 episodes, didn't skip through anything. <laughs> And I was watching more Succession. Yeah, he he wanted to rewatch Succession before the new season came out. So lots of thoughts, to be honest with you. And we'll just get right through it. Jake will talk about his first impressions, why he didn't want to continue watching it. I can talk about why I binged it, um, which I did. And then in the spoiler section, we'll talk about a few other additional details. So you go. I stopped watching it because it reminded me of Slow Horses, but without any of the humor or darkness dark fun you know yeah yeah you know it, it was just it felt like slow horses but because it starts off with a slow guy horses is an apple by it's an apple happened. show about like british uh intelligence and whatever mm -hmm. very good gary oldman mm -hmm. um but it's, it starts out this guy's like failed in a big mission and i thought like oh it's kind of like slow horses but um it it just felt like... And this is FBI. Yeah, yeah. It, it was just like, you know, White House, you know, government kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, it just kind of feels like 24. Like I used to watch 24 when I was a kid, you mm -hmm. know, and any other kind of like CIA stuff. And um, I didn't give it an honest shot. I wasn't that interested in it, but I did watch the first episode and I was like, I felt like I've seen this. I prefer slow horses. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I like slow horses. This yeah. just um, feels a little more bland. And I'm just going to do something else with my time. There's so many like FBI shows, right? Like Mindhunter, everything else, which we love Mindhunter. Mindhunter's on another level. So I thought you would like it because uh, it was, you like Mindhunter, you like Slow Horses. I, I didn't know what the show was about. I read like the synopsis of it. I thought it sounded good. But yeah. I, it, it was just a little too like cartoony stuff you'd see on NBC at any, yeah. any given night. The basic plot is Peter. He um, is... An FBI agent. He's the night agent who works in the basement of the White House. He's just there to pick up calls for spies. One night he gets a call from a niece of two spies who eventually become deceased. He basically needs to save her and also wants to solve the murder of what killed, who killed um, the aunt and uncle. And he doesn't know who he can trust in the White House. Hmm. And so it's more like solving mystery of who's really the guilty party. You learn who the guilty party is halfway through it. There are 10 episodes and around, I think, the fifth or sixth episode, to be honest. You get the answer and then it's about how are they going to prove this powerful person is the guilty party. Overall, what I thought about the show, very binge worthy, very forgettable. Oh. Because I watched like the first six episodes together. I woke up, watched the the last four. As a day or two, and I watched it a week ago at this point. As a day or two went by, I was thinking, oh, that was a good show. What was it about again? Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, I I remember the feeling of like, oh, I want to know what happens next. Yeah. But then it's like a mystery that as soon as you solve it, you are no longer interested in it. Like, it's yeah. a puzzle. You want to spend your time making sure the picture is clear to you but as soon as it is it's like ah it's just a typical waterfall it, that's what differentiates it from slow horses yeah. in that when the mystery is figured out and things are uncovered you still care because you like the characters exactly and i would watch second season if there was a second season and i think it, because it stayed number one for a while i think there will be i mean who knows with netflix it wasn't like something where i'm like oh i can't wait till the second season is there i felt like it was a basic story and what really kept me engaged was that there was a mystery to be solved plot was well delivered i thought it could be any other fbi agent i thought it could be any other damsel in distress who um. turns out to be have an agency on her own which i don't think is a spoiler at all yeah and i you know i thought it was very typical and it's kind of like that fun who done it you know it's like the glass onion to be honest it's like glass onion it's like a typical traditional who done it but it wasn't like knives out where i'm like oh i can't way it's going to be like a you know it's going to be cool because yeah. the humor was just lacking in the second one um i thought the acting was really um well done um i will say but i thought the villains needed at the end it, like the last episode was like this shit is so convenient mm. And I'm glad that it was the last episode because if it was convenient like that for more than one episode, then I would have been like, eh, I don't know. I can wait. I can have breakfast first. Very bingeable, very forgettable should be Netflix's motto. Yeah. Well, the last episode was just... 
so bad, I felt. Well, when we get into spoilers, I'll I'll tell you what I thought. Because I'd look, I was like in the kitchen doing my own thing. But I, every now and then I'd look up while you're watching the show. And I'd be like, how, how is this happening? This is the same show, you know? <laughs> so I'd be like, okay, interesting. But it was fine. Not the greatest sense because it was the last episode. I was kind of like burnt out, willing to accept anything. <laughs> so how? why do you think it's so popular? Because it's a, a classic FBI show that I yeah. think people are into the cop type of show. And also it's a classic like the good guy solves the murder gets it's like jack ryan kind of like netflix yeah. version oh, of it i like jack ryan yeah and i i think this is a the, the peter character is supposed to be like jack ryan mm. um although like exposing in, internal corruption and then also he falls in love you know you can tell from the thumbnail was, from well the in the show. first episode i was like even before they met, I was just like, oh, okay, they're going to You can see all the, yeah, <laughs> you can see all the plots there for that. And so I would rate this five out of 10. Dang, if I thought you I had, it Well, if I, so I want to say, I want to rate this five out of 10 now, thinking back to it, and it's much more forgettable. Huh. Um, But if I had rated it like a day after I watched it, I would have probably rated it the traditional audio rating, which is seven out of 10. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's kind of good we waited. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's like you know, it's kind of like a good, I don't know, whatever you marinate in the fridge. It's like, ooh, it's good. Like sometimes I wonder about that when we watch stuff. If the movies we see and review right when we come back from the theater, if we're giving it like a special curve, you know. I think so. The classic example is Babylon. You're right, right. You know, I liked it more. I hated it while I watched it. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> like a month after we watched it, I was like, yeah, that was a good film. Some shows and movies can do that too. So yeah. can we go to spoiler section? Spoilers, go, go Three, for it. Three, two, one. Uh, tell me all about this show that I didn't watch. All right. Well, I'm not going to tell you all about it because if you made it here, I'm going to assume that you watched it. But yeah. I will tell you the things that um, I liked that would be spoilers and that I didn't like that would be spoilers. Diane, who is Peter's mentor is the bad guy and the whole plot convenience saw that coming yeah the whole plot convenience was around her she loves her best friend who's the president of the united states um because they roomed together they were like friends for a very long time when she finds out that the vice president was trying to bomb a bunch of people to assassin one person and make it not look like an assassination because you know he didn't want like to create a war with that country i would think her loyalty to the president would make it where she would want to include the president in in the conversation instead of keep her in the dark because she would be more safe in some ways knowing and understanding but she doesn't at the very end last episode she draws a line because the vice president and his accomplice um they want to assassinate the president so the vice president becomes president she says this is where i draw the line where it hurts her but it's like so convenient because it's like she's trying to protect herself and she's this ruthless person and the first episode or first or second episode she says they're at the zoo and she asks peter who would you want to be the tiger the lion and then there's like cubs and then there's this person who gives the tiger um food and then peter goes i forget if he says the tiger or a lion like i said this movie is a little or this show is a little forgettable but he says one of the animals and then she goes no i would want to be that person who's giving the meat because that bitch has the key and you want to be the bitch with the keys so it sounds like very ambitious right and then she just all of a sudden changes her mind, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to clean up shit or whatever. Like, you would think that she would just like, even though she really like loves her friendship with her, the president, they have a lot. You think that because her character is like ruthless, that she would want to, she would feel bad about it, but she would be okay killing the president and she wouldn't. Peter and Rose, the two main characters of the show... Peter being the uh, the night agent, the FBI agent, um, and Rose being the person who is the victim, um, was the niece of the uncle, the two spies who were killed. They need a person to get them in this cabin. <laughs> so Diane goes from villain to being like, oh, I'm not actually the true villain. The true villain is the vice president, wh- whom we knew was the villain from the beginning because he was very much like portrayed as like, he's the devil, like people protesting he's a devil and stuff like that, you know? So 
It's like, yeah, he's the obvious villain. Mm. So the obvious villain becomes more obvious of a villain. And then the person who's a villain becomes change of heart. I would never, this is where I draw the line. <laughs> so can I say the scene I saw where I went, what, where did the show end up going? Well, I don't know if this was the climax of the show, but I just remember looking up and I see the protagonist standing there outside of like the president's helicopter with a gun into the in the president's face going there's a bomb on the helicopter i'll shoot her if you don't don't go get the bomb out of there and i'm watching it going like what is happening this is not a good uh look (laughs) (laughs) well so peter like his background is that his father when we find out in the end was rightfully blamed for it's a little bit more complicated because it turns out he was a double agent but anyway like he his name is disgraced because he was working for the enemy and then peter thinks that that's a lie or whatever so his whole thing is he needs to do the right thing and he wants to do the right thing and at the end when the plot again uh, to kill the president so the vice president could become president unfolds and they find out that there's a bomb in the cabin and also in the plane the only way that he could get the army because the army was i don't know if they were the army i think they were um but like air force i think actually um half of them were like villains the other half were good guys and to convince the good guys to search the the plane they would and do that because he just unauthorized in the cabin unless he pretended like he was going to kill the president so that he could save the president's life which i don't have a problem with honestly yeah it does kind of take into a big turn when you're looking at the first episode and then you see the last episode where there, it's, it's the big turn well another thing that baffled me was at the end the president's like what can i do to thank you for this and we were both watching and then he says like i want to know the truth about my dad and we're both like and like a lot of money right (laughs) oh and that's thank you you reminded me again like i said this uh, the show was forgettable another thing that really annoyed the shit out of me was at the very end of this series where it goes what what do you like anything you want okay this guy diane falsely accused him midway in the season um of saying that he's the one who bombed and killed you know and and he's been like he's a bad guy basically so you should ask his have face name was cleared, right? all over the news right everyone hates him he gets attacked and then, yeah point. exactly he gets attacked by well he gets attacked like even in the first episode because he saved a bombing of the train and people think he actually implanted it because of who his father was he's a, very convenient for diane to use to save her own face because frame him he's yeah, yeah. frame him because he is already suspected and there's already conspiracy theory and then so anyway his name is plaster vice president says this is the person who kidnapped my daughter Mm. because his daughter gets kidnapped at the end he says he doesn't want like people to know like no one will the the president goes no one will know what you did why the fuck not (laughs) were you not bothered in the beginning of the series that like you were constantly attacked because people wrongfully assumed that you were the bad guy why the fuck wouldn't you want credit do you not want sanity back in your life like people are going to continue to think that you were this bad guy that was the conflict that like started your whole like inner issue with professionalism and everything else it's like what the fuck that doesn't make any sense and it comes across very naive it comes across so naive and i hate those kind of ploys where i think what the writers were trying to do is like he's actually a real good guy he didn't do it for any credit it this is when it becomes unrealistic any person in a situation would want their name clear any person he even if you're the best person in the world well, it's, it's, it's like stupid he's, not he's just a martyr and he doesn't care it's like even if you're a martyr you want your name cleared because you're, yeah self, but, but not only that like he he is like people are associated with him when you want your name clear for people who are associated with you like there's one scene where rose uh, his love interest gets attacked because she becomes a missing person and he, peter is the, the person of interest and it's like they see her um with peter and then someone films her going in, in into a car with Peter and Peter like raises a gun. A- anyway, there's a whole scene in there. They think that now she's accomplished. She's a willing victim. She actually like ran away with him or she has, a, you know, 
she has some kind of like Stockholm syndrome, you know, instead of like actually being a real victim. When you want her name cleared, it's like, it's so, it, that no, just doesn't no. make any sense. At the very end of the series, he goes on a secret, he becomes one of the spies. So basically he gets a big time promotion. Him and Rose have an understanding they'll see each other when they see each other. And, you know, it's kind of implied that she'll wait for him, but she'll also do her own thing because she failed in the tech business or and she wants to restart her career, blah, blah, blah all great but it's like the last episode what the fuck did you guys just like get tired and it's like let me just let's just see what like makes it work i think if people watch episode 10 they're invested enough and they'll probably just finish the series me um because you've already watched nine episodes and why quit at the very last one of course you know and it's like it's like fine you know i guess the series was enjoyable enough for me to watch it in a in one night and a half of the day but it was forgettable and i don't know how many people are gonna watch season two if season two does come out so that'll be interesting i'm sure they will it seemed like it did well yeah, but Netflix kind of cancels things, even if it does well. So we'll see. I honestly, there's so much more that I could talk about, but those are the main reasons why my ratings were was affected. You know, I could go on about like the vice president and other stuff, but they were so forgettable. It was very typical bad guy behavior. Um, vice president's daughter was interesting in the sense that he she slept with her professor, but also very, very typical of what I thought I would expect from someone in her position who's rebellious. Yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Let us know your thoughts. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. Bye.